Temple of Doom here from Pop Culture with Silver Screen Machine and team. And I am at Fresh Kills Con, the inaugural Fresh Kills Con, a horror convention in the lovely Niagara Falls, Ontario. And I'm here with a very special guest. He's an actor you may recognize from several famous movies, Return of the Living Dead, Tombstone, Point Break, awesome stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. John Philbin. There it is. And, and to get a shot of his sign, that just distracted me for a second realizing someone completely defaced his sign. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the scar on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Yeah. Yeah, he's scarred for life. We want to ask him what happened. Scarred for life. Yeah. So I got a quick shot of him actually getting the, uh, the makeup. Yes. Great, great job by Jen Johnston. Uh, yes. Fresh kills. So how are you doing? How are you enjoying the? Uh, I've had so much fun here. It's been a great con. I can't wait to come back. I love Niagara Falls. People are really kind. I've met everybody. It's been really cool. I've had a great time. And I awesome. the, band, the rock show last night was on fire. I had a blast. Yeah. I'm still having fun. Great, great. I, yeah, I heard they were pretty sweet. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, a couple. Well, we'll start with a couple of your earlier films. I know that. Uh, one of your first films, if not your first, was Children of the Corn. Right? That was my first film. Children of the Corn was the first film I ever uh, shot. It wasn't the first film I ever got cast for. That was Grand New York State. But then I got cast in Children of the Corn and shot that first. Okay, great. And uh, first movie ever. Ah, right. And that's the original, of course, with Linda Hamilton. Uh, and then, of course, as we know, he was Chuck in Return of the Living Dead. Yes, I was Chuck in Return of the Living Dead. And uh, just briefly, what was it like working on that movie with uh, Jewel Shepard, Blue Gallagher, Gulliger, that is, and... Uh, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> no, it was, uh, you know, every movie's different, right? And you never know what a movie's going to turn out like unless you're like a producer lead, you're going to Danny's every day. You just never know. Yeah. And we were young actors. I mean, I only worked with kids. I didn't get to work with Clue. Well, actually, I did get to work with Clue. I did get to work with Clue. But I didn't get to work with James Cairn and, and Don Kalfa. So it was just me and Jules and the kids. Brian Peck was really fun. And, and I was friends with Tommy before and afterwards. But, uh, and Jules for life now, you know. Actually, much closer, having much more fun with the entire cast now. 30 something years later and during the filming because in the filming I would just come and go to work and leave and I, I had no idea what what it was going to be like I was like fuck all I know is when I got there they said go get your wardrobe and now stand out here with everyone how's this guy's doing and then water just a hose just a bucket of water <laughs> I was like fuck at night time no it was it was exciting and weird <laughs> but now it's like we're this family. I'm so much more in love with these people now. I've gotten to know them from conventions, from the cult conventions that we go to. Because during the film, I didn't get to know them hardly at all. Mm -hmm. Except Tommy, I've known Tommy. Anyway, so I'm just thrilled that I was just love James. I don't know what your questions are, but <laughs> it must be a pleasant surprise. We're losing some of us, and it's like I'm looking at them. It's a pleasant surprise for it to be such a big cult hit. Yeah. Uh, 35 I, years later, uh, yeah, I thought yeah. the movie wasn't going to come out. No one's going to see it. No one's going to like it. Yeah, you just never know, right? They could make never millions. Know. They could make ten cents. You don't know what's going to happen. You never know. And so this thing became this thing that I'm so proud, lucky to have been a part of about, you know, 25 years after we made it. Yeah, exactly. It's been long lasting. And I, stay alive. Yeah. Great things happen. Um, can happen. I did a little uh, research on the internet, and uh, uh -oh. you can tell me if the internet has lied to me or not. Okay, but, let's see. Uh, of course, you were in the movie Point Break. Yes. You played a character named Nathaniel. Uh, and uh, yeah. now, uh, I wanted to know, uh, in terms of, well, two questions. First one is, you know, uh, I hear that you actually are uh, very experienced at surfing. I'm surfing. And that you were showing. Okay, so you, you can show a lot of the cast how to surf during that film? And, uh, nope. No? Nope? Okay. <laughs> they had, that is why I became a surfing instructor. When I finished making Point Break, I did a couple more movies, but I was like, the parts, I was like, I wasn't getting the parts I wanted, and uh, this was years after Point Break, actually. I wasn't getting the parts I wanted. This is after Tombstone, because I wanted, that was awesome. That was just an offer, but I mean, that was great. But there was a time when the roles kind of slowed down for me, and I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know how to do anything, and I went, the only thing I, have, the only thing I know how to do is surf. And so I looked around, I started teaching surfing for the movies, for Blue Crush. You know, I started, I taught Kate Bosworth how to surf, and then I started teaching surfing. Because no one really was teaching surfing during Point Break. Well, 
you know. And so those guys weren't getting professional instruction. Nobody, I was an actor, so I, I, they couldn't hire me to teach them how to surf and stuff. There was someone else would take them. I would go surfing with some of the actors, but I wasn't teaching surfing. It was completely different. And I noticed that they didn't have anybody doing that for films. And I just got kind of lucky in the surf instruction thing when surf films sort of, they started making a couple and everybody wanted to learn how to surf. So I, I've been teaching surf for the past 15 years, a lot of times for the movies and TV. But back then, no. I, I went surfing with them, but I wasn't teaching them. Yeah. Any uh, Patrick St Swayze stories or Keanu Reeves stories or anything? Or a was thousand. Was I mean... <laughs> any, any brief ones that you want to mention? Uh, Keanu Reeves is... Now he's starting to get the credit because I think the popularity of John Wick and the, and the generosity from, from the Matrix series about who he is and what he's, what he's really like. But I used to say this, and then from the, from after making the movie, I was like, hey, people were like, what's Keanu like? You know, he wasn't a movie star yet. You know, Catherine Bigelow saw him and saw something in this. I think he could be a leading man one and a movie star, which is, movie stars are about action, you know? I think he's got that in him. She's the first one to really see that. He did Point Break before he did Speed. Right, yeah. And that might have been the movie that maybe and he's not working And he's working with, it is for sure, and he's working with Patrick Swayze, who was a huge movie star before we did the movie, but that rating was falling when we shot the movie. And then while we were working on the movie, a little thing he did that thought wasn't going to be anything came out called Ghost, and people loved it. And now Patrick's the highest movie star in the world when Ghost came out. It was right. such a huge hit. So now we had to go back and do reshoots for Point Break, and Patrick was the most expensive day great movie star of the world. I'm like, Patrick, we just need to do this. He'd already gone and done another movie, his hair was cut off, Keanu's hair was long, how he likes it. You know, it was, the reshoot was when we did the beach. At, at Bell's Beach for the 50 year swell that was shot in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Oregon. But anyway, the thing is, Keanu is the smartest guy in every room he walks into, without a doubt. There's, he's got a photographic memory. So he, and all he does is read astrophysics, you know, you know, biology, chemistry, math, you know, like Shakespeare. He just, and it's all in, in there. So he's always the smartest guy in the room, but he'll never let you know it. He's never let you know it. He's so generous and nice. He's just into his music and his motorcycle. I'm into motorcycles, he's into motorcycles. So it was like, he would ride his bike to Gold's Gym. We'd all have to work out together. Just a fucking hero of a guy. And this is back then. Right. So he's maintained that through being a huge worldwide movie star, just giving points away and credits and helping people and being down to earth and loving his, still true to his motorcycles and just a great guy. And Patrick, freak of nature, loving everyone, loved the love that people had for him was so deserved because he loved people and he worked, he was at 100%, the guy never had a half, a half volume, he was giving all the time. When, this is the second movie I did with Patrick, we, we talked every night and he brought me to his ranch and showed me his horses, Arabian horses, he took me skydiving like eight times to the water scale his boat, just, just took us into his family and loved us and talked to us every day and we were friends for life until he passed away, but there, there's no more generous man in Patrick's ways and Keanu Reeves. Those guys are, are amazing. Oh, that's, great. that's a great story. Uh, my, last quest, my last question about... Uh, Am I talking too much? No, not at all. We, we're, you know, we're on the radio. We, we love to talk all, blah, 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 all day long. All Verbal day. diarrhea all day long. Uh, but uh, my last question, of course, one of my personal favorite movies of all time, not just my favorite Western, a lot of people's favorite Western, is Tombstone, yeah. which has an amazing epic cast in it that would take all day to go through how many famous people are in that movie. Yeah. Everybody from Kurt Russell down to Charlton Heston, you know, in that yeah. movie. And you played a character, I believe his name was, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was it Tom McClory? Tom McClory. And he was one of the guys that was killed in the shootout at the OK Corral. That is correct. Absolutely. With his brother, Frank. So uh, I've heard many interesting stories about, uh, from other actors like Michael Bean talking to them yeah. and to him and asking him what was it like working on the movie. Um, I'd love to get a whole bunch of different perspectives for different kinds of scenes that we've worked on. Obviously you were in that scene. So what's it like working on that shootout? And that's in YouTube. Thank you. Great question. So we, uh, the writer Kevin Jare, who was originally the director but got fired and replaced by George Cosmatos, he wrote into the script a, a great love for history in the Western and the OK Corral and what happened. Great writer. He got replaced as a director because he wasn't a director, but he was a brilliant fucking writer. Anyway, when George came in, George is an action movie director. 
So George Cosmatos is an action film director. Was it was it. Both those guys are dead, by the way. Re-releases or whatever you guys have been doing. But anyway, um, <laughs> we rehearsed the OK Corral shootout from action to cut to be exactly to the second as long as the best historical records are for how long that fight took place, which is like almost two minutes or something, and how many shells were fired or found. So, and we did it to the second on the on the dress rehearsal before we filmed it. We did it to the second, to the round. It was amazing moment because we're all practicing shooting and riding around the desert. Don't think around a lot to all of us because we're actors who love westerns. And you know, but when we shot the first one for film, Stephen Lang, you know, this brilliant actor, but he's just now the camera's rolling and he's just going off on stuff, and we're like, what is going on? And everyone starts ad libbing, and we're like, cut. You know, the director's like, cut. And I'm like, that was like 20. What the hell happened? You know, like we've got this thing down. Let's do it exactly how we did it. Back to the second and to the round. You know, no extra, nothing. And we kept and we worked on that. That was such a magic scene to be a part of the OK shootout the OK crowd done to the second and to the round. It was awesome. It's an amazing film, very memorable. Val Kilmer shoots me and I had to rear a horse. If you go back, I've got this white horse and I'm like, shoot that, I'm under this horse and then he's got a shotgun and he's waiting. And I have to rear the horse where they do that is you put a, the, the strap around the saddle and you pull it back like this so it's pulling back on the horse. So you're in front of the horse pulling this thing down. It's called a rearing horse. It's a stud horse. And the horse goes all the way up. And when the horse goes up, Val can see me and shoot me. And I get shot there and get pulled back. But on the on the take that landed in the movie, I pulled it too hard and the horse went up and back over and landed on its back. And Val is so horse savvy because he's got horses, got ran. He's like, you know, when you did that, that horse, like, oh, was coming at me. You weren't trying to kill me with that horse, were you? It's like, I might maybe. Method acting. A little too into gear. method acting. Yeah, but he was just super aware. And I'm, I'm like, I wasn't. You know, like, he's got a horse, gun, shotgun, you know, and I'm like, I gotta rear this horse and shoot it foul, and Val's gonna kill me, and I gotta fall back. I'm thinking of all this technical stuff, and I'm tense about it. So, but he's there, he was very methodical. It was, it was really fun. I learned a lot. The film was brilliant in that movie. Was the holiday, absolutely. The whole cast, the whole movie is so great. We were allowed to watch dailies. I'd watch dailies, you know, and they'd, you know, before, Val would just be looking at the camera, talking to the studio executives and the camera people and makeup people, talking to his wardrobe and his crew are just weeping about something they get at, they don't actually they be talking to her, you know, and this love story they are having a love story and just weeping. We cut, you know, and then he was like a genius to watch. We all got to watch Dales when you watch about Kilmer, it's like, wow, that guy's a genius. Because you see him on film before action. And what he's doing is incredible. The facility he had was, was amazing. Probably still not just about off this world and hurt and nailed that. I mean, he, he got that character and set on the last day. Because we worked on the last day, I saw him do this thing that didn't end up in the movie. And I was like, that was like the best fucking work I've seen you do. That was because I just got him. I just got him. But people say that all the time, you know, they get the character, Liam Neeson got the, his character about six months after he finished filming that Spielberg movie, you know, about the Nazis. Yes. Anyway, Schindler's List. Yes. Schindler's List. The list, yeah. My favorite movie ever. <laughs> no, Miller's Crossing's my favorite. Good one. That's it? That's, uh, that's normal, absolutely. We could talk all day. I mean, yeah, we could talk to you all day because you're awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is John Philbin. And again, it's just been a blast here at the inaugural Fresh Kills Con. In, in Niagara Falls, Ontario. <laughs> and uh, wow, what a great, great event. Had a blast. Alright, guys. Good time. Until uh, next time. I do a lot of Peace.